Can't stop, won't stop, game stop. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. It's Brandon here, and I'm going to explain a potential date for this game stop short squeeze. This is like the perfect storm. A lot of things are happening on or around this day, and this is on March 19th. If you want to check out the original Reddit post that a lot of this is based off of, I'm going to leave it in the description so you can read it, but I'm going to be doing some analysis on why March 19th is a potential day for this massive short squeeze. Okay, number one, March 19th is on a Friday. And for those of you who are familiar with options contracts, this means that options are expiring on that day. So if we see a high enough price, short sellers who are writing these naked contracts are gonna have to buy up all of those shares to deliver them. Otherwise they could face massive fines and sanctions. But the option contracts actually have to expire in the money. So what else is going to help propel the stock upwards? Okay, number two, naked short selling. So naked short selling is actually legal as long as whoever is doing it is actually able to deliver those shares in a certain time period. The time limit for retail investors is three days. You, as the common investor or trader, have three days to locate the shares, buy them, and deliver them. Otherwise, the shares are now known as what's called a fail to deliver. And a fail to deliver is the SEC recognizing that, hey, you just did something illegal. Here's the fines that you don't do it again. Market makers like Citadel are exempt to this. They have 21 days to deliver the shares. Now in the past, if they can't locate the shares, they've just paid off the fines or the fail to deliver because the shorting makes them way more money than the fines. And this is how some of Wall Street operates and makes its money. They illegally short sell and just pay the fines. But this time, not only did we just have the congressional hearing about GameStop, so the SEC can't exactly ignore it like they have in the past, but on February 25th, there is a volume somewhere in the ballpark of 33 million to 51 million shares sold short. Even just 33 million is absolutely insane. That's a crazy amount of volume sold short. Remember, these market makers have 21 days to deliver the shares. And guess which day February 25th plus 21 days is? March 19th. So short sellers have until March 19th to locate the shares. And the day before, the volume on short shares was 12 million. So this time is going to be a lot harder for these short sellers to get around this. All right, number three, XRT. XRT is a retail ETF that has a large stake in GameStop. And just as you might have guessed, they lend out their shares to short sellers. Now, short selling isn't illegal and they don't have a specific time they need to deliver by, but there is one interesting thing about XRT. March 19th is the XRT rebalance day and their dividend payout is expected to be on March 20th. Now, GameStop pays at a dividend and guess who has to pay for those dividends? short sellers. And the thing about short sellers paying the shareholders dividends is that those dividends are actually taxed higher than if the dividends were paid out directly. Now, obviously XRT doesn't want this because they'd have a lot of angry shareholders emailing and calling them. So they're going to have to force the short sellers to cover, which will send the stock higher. All right, number four, large institutional hedging against their long positions. Now, obviously a lot of hedge funds aren't going to be long in GameStop. They're going to be long in SPY, Apple, Facebook, Coca-Cola, and a bunch of other S&P 500 stocks. This is why we saw so many of these stocks trade lower while GameStop and other high volatility stocks were soaring. Institutions were selling their positions and longs to help fight the GameStop battle. It could be paying interest on borrowed shares. It could be buying options. It could be a lot of stuff. But at the end of the day, they sold a good amount of their positions. And that's why we saw all of these stocks trading lower. And coincidentally, there's an unusually large amount of volume for March 19 puts on a lot of these stocks. Every other week has a very low amount of volume and open interest, except for March 19th. So what does that mean? This means that institutions know something that most most people don't. They're betting that GameStop is going to soar again on or near March 19th, and they'll make a bunch of money off of these puts and buy back their long position when it's all over. Not only that, but a ton of VIX calls were purchased that expired two days prior, meaning that institutions are betting on huge volatility in the market. Number five, a quadruple witching day. This is a day at which stock index futures, stock index options, stock options, and single stock futures all expire on the same day. All four of these asset classes expire on the same day on the third Friday in March, June, September, and December. And guess which day the third Friday in March is? March 19th. This means that there's going to be a massive amount of volume on that day, which could potentially send GameStop soaring. Number six, GameStop earnings. GameStop earnings are expected to be announced four days after March 19th, and considering that the holiday season is their best performing season by far, and the release of the new consoles occurred at the same time, the pre-earnings hype could make a lot of people buy in. 
So March 19th is a potential date for this short squeeze. It's not a guaranteed thing, but there are a lot of potential catalysts for this to happen on or around this day. But remember, try not to get attached to a certain date that the short squeeze will happen on because if it doesn't happen, you're gonna feel like there isn't going to be one. And it's not a guaranteed thing to happen either, but in the long term, I actually think that GameStop has a good amount of potential. Ryan Cohen joining the board, planning a massive revamp on GameStop's business model, a market leader in the booming video game industry, uh, a lot of positive sentiment from people learning about GameStop through the short squeeze and just growing up and going to GameStop. I'm someone who loved going to GameStop growing up, and I still do, so I definitely think there's a future for GameStop up ahead. If the management wasn't so good, I wouldn't be so confident um because as it stands right now gamestop's business model isn't exactly great but ryan cohen being on the board is a really good sign of gamestop's future all right stay safe everyone and remember can't stop won't stop gamestop